Hello and welcome. My name is Andrei Sekalov. I am CG artist, generalist and developer. Not so long ago, this channel has finally gained first 100 of subscribers. I thank you so much and I do really appreciate it. Most of you are probably waiting for some tutorials about Blender EV Nebula and Blender Lens Flares. Well, for the last four months I've been working on something really special. I'm sure you will like it. For those of you who don't want to wait for those tutorials anymore, I'll put the links to the project files in the video description. So those of you who wanted to try to figure out them yourselves could do this. Because recording tutorial series about them will take some more time. And now I want to talk about this thing I've been working on for the last four months. Well, I'm really excited because this is a suffering based motion blur add-on for EV render engine for Blender 2.8. Well, if it has its native motion blur, but it affects only camera movement, which means neither object movements, nor particles, nor simulations, nor texture animations, nor volumetrics are affected. The idea was to make it as much user-friendly as possible, so you could actually see what is going on and abort the process at any time. But that's not all. I wanted to make it possible to use it with complex compositor node setups, with different scenes, to make it work just as cycles motion blur. Four months of development and diving deep into the dark waters of Blender API, where sunlight haven't touched a thing for years. And I've done it. Enough boring stories, let's jump right into it. True motion blur. Objects, particles, mesh simulations, volumetrics, animated textures. It affects everything that has been somehow animated. You can use complex compositor setups with different render engines, different settings of motion blur in different scenes, and it will work. What it actually does, for each active render pass, it creates file output node and connects the pass to it. Then it calculates subframes number and placement, based on add-on settings, render them, mixes the final frame from subframes images, put mixes into generated Blender images, and render a final frame from them. All temporary images are stored in the temporary folder in the project render directory, and deleted right after frame render is finished. That is basically it. You use all the same commands you use for a native render. Even launched from a cycle scene, it will automatically find out if there are scenes with active true motion blur used in Compositor and affects only their active passes. Let's take a look at the settings. Most of them are pretty common for any motion blur. Position means where is the center of the frame around which subframes are situated. That affects blur trails. Shutter means how far from the center of the frame subframes are. Soft limit is 1, which means subframes are spread along the whole frame length. But it may be manually increased till 2, making an effect even more visible. Samples means how many subframes will be rendered per frame. More subframes means more smooth blur, but more render time. Add-on takes into account independent settings of each scene you use in Compositor. For example, you can separate some fast particle system into another scene and increase the sample rate only for it. I made all parameters animatable. The next setting is Quality Boost, and this is pretty tricky. By default, Add-on lowers original scene sample rate proportionally to its sample number. For example, if your original scene sample rate is 64 and a done samples number is 16, while render subframes, it will lower scene render samples to 64 divided by 16, which is 4. In most cases, after subframes are mixed to a frame, in the ending result, you've got your original sample rate back, 
because all subframes are summed. But there are some features in Blender, like shadows or volumetrics with extreme texture settings, which need more samples to even start showing something. So the quality boost proportionally increases sample rate for each subframe from its normal lowered amount till original scene sample rate. So tweaking your scene sample rate and quality boost allows you to find out the best compromise between render speed and quality. The final checkbox is render passes. When it is checked, True Motion Blur add-on will render subframes for all scene enabled render passes, even if they have no links and not written anywhere. Download installation zip file from GitHub, install from right inside the Blender, edit, preferences, add-ons, install, search for it, install, and enable it in Add-ons tab and in Render settings. When you press Render, it automatically opens Compositor, Use Nodes, Backdrop to be able to properly display render results, add images for subframe mixes, add Alpha Over Mix Nodes to keep things organized, render subframes, mix them, put them into the images, render the final frame, which is saved automatically if you render animation, or which you can save manually from render viewport, and then clean up, delete all temporary files, folders and nodes, leaving only rendered mixed images and alpha over mixed nodes to control. Be careful, every time render starts, add-on finds its own previously created nodes and images by their names, deletes them and recreate again, so avoid using, duplicating and editing them or name your nodes starting with capital TMB characters. In most cases, they will be deleted. Also, avoid using add-ons temporary directories. Even if something goes wrong, Blender crashes and temporary folders remain in your project render directory, on each render start, True Motion Blur automatically search for them and delete if find the folder itself and everything inside it, so all the files in its temporary folders will be deleted. The final thing, this is an alpha version. In most cases, on my tests, it has already worked pretty stable, but sure, there may be other cases. Anyway, this is my first big program, so if nothing would go wrong in it, that would be a miracle. Alright, thanks for watching, I'll leave the link to the GitHub installation file in the video description, so you can download it and install it. Feel free to make your tests, write me back, so how do you like it, or if you found some bugs, you can write here or on GitHub, or in my Instagram link in the video description. I'll try to fix that bug and make some help. Subscribe this channel, if you liked it, press like button, if you don't like it, press dislike button, leave your comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Oh, I forgot, it works not only for Eevee, but for Workbench Render Engine either. Because why not?